Okay, so I've had two of these for a couple of weeks now. One has been unboxed and used and thoroughly tested over the last couple of weeks. This one, I thought I'd say we'd do a quick unboxing, a quick build video and a quick test video all in one, uh, not gonna be two hours long. This is only be about 20 minutes uh, long. I'm gonna fast forward through all the building and everything. You'll still be able to watch it on screen, uh, but I thought it'd be nice to, to do that. And also we'll go through the pros and cons of the new Prusa Mini uh, here on International 3D Printer. Okay, so first I'll just go through a few of the facts uh, about the new Prusa Mini and compare it to the Mark III S, which is their flagship model at the moment, apart from the SL1, obviously. Uh, the build volume on the Prusa Mini is 18 by 18 by 18 centimeters, which is about seven inches by seven inches by seven inches. Uh, the Mark III is 25 by 21 by 21 centimeters, which is 9.84 by 8.3 by 8.3 inches. Um, so there's considerable redu reduction in uh, build volume. But the reason that the hook line that got me with regards to the Mini was the fact that for the same price as one um, Prusa uh, Mark III, which is in kit form, I buy them in kit form, which is 769 euros, and the Mini is 349 euros. I'll put the conversions at the bottom of the screen and everything for you, so it's dollars and pounds. I can get two Minis for the price of one Mark III. Now, I love the Mark III's. I've got eight of them, and they're burning away all day, all night, 24-7, uh, doing products for Ultimate Modding products. But if I can get Minis, two Minis for the price of that, I can nearly double production very, very soon. But uh, it's one of those things that, you know, they do take up actually more space than the Mark III, which is very odd because it's a very it's a much smaller machine. But because the the filament spool isn't on top, it does make a big difference. So I've got to you know juggle that around. But apart from that, it is a case of the, the stuff that I print is no bigger than I think 160 um, millimeters is the biggest item, so it fits on this uh, print bed quite well, um, and so it's not going to be a problem for me. But um, the only other difference really between the two are uh, the old Mark III has an 8-bit board and the Mini has a 32-bit board, which means it can do a lot more things. I think really when they bring the Mark IV out, they'll have a 32-bit board and maybe the Mini is a bit of a, a proving ground for that, which I would imagine the Mark IV will be out next year uh, or later on later this year. I know that he did mention that the uh, there's a large Core XY coming from Prusa this year, which I should definitely be getting. Um, but anyway, uh, the prices as you've seen is comparable. If you buy a built uh, Mark III, it's 999 euros uh, conversions here. I always buy kit forms, saves a couple of hundred uh, euros, plus I enjoy building them, it only takes me a few hours now. And I think if you're gonna get a printer, if you can buy one in kit form, uh, one that's proven as well, like the Prusa, you're just gonna in increase your knowledge. Now, if anything goes wrong with any of my printers, I've, had, I've got it fixed with up and running again within 20 minutes uh, because I've taken them apart and put them together so many times now that it's, it's like a second nature. So I would really advise that for anyone. Don't buy one whole, try and buy a kit form if you can. It really does improve and increase your knowledge of the, the machines and how they work and how a 3D printer works. And uh, obviously the base is the same for all FDM printers. Anyway, so, uh, without further ado, I think we'll start opening the box and get inside and see what we can see. Unfortunately, because of the way I've had to do this, my new studio, I can't put an overhead camera in yet. I've got to put a big jig up there at some point to try and put a, um, uh, and get a new remote control camera for up there as well. I've had to do it for, you're gonna have to see from a, like a top down side on view uh, as we build as well as the front view. And I'll tilt the front camera and zoom in a little bit more on the table so you can see that as I'm building it. Until I can sort out the studio, um, since we moved out, it's been an absolute nightmare filming anything. It's just really, really hard. As you can see, I am stuck for space here. So um, what we'll do is we'll do an unboxing. Uh, I'll build it, it'll be a quick one. I'll quickly unbuild it. Probably won't do any talking, might break here and there for a few piece it for a few seconds just to you know if there's anything I need to think that he's pointing out or anything like that uh, but apart from that it'll be into cut the music build through it I won't bore you with me just building it and it just printing and um, we'll go through all that really fast and then we'll get to the end and we'll talk about what I think uh, are the good things and the bad points about this printer and I'll tell you about my experience so far with the other one which is very interesting so I think without further ado let's get in the box Okay, we'll just keep it on this camera initially. Uh, we'll go into the box. And as you can see, 
Uh, what I do like about this, as I say, I've already unpacked one. You get your little sheet with all your info on. They have packed it really well. Um, it's very, very well packed indeed. Very sturdy packing and it should make for no breakages uh, when it gets it. Obviously there will always be the old case, but it's really good thick cardboard and everything like that as well. Quickly just run through this. We've got the USB key printout of the, uh, which you get with every Poos machine, which is just telling you how the heater went and all the, all the tests. You've then got your assembly manual, the obligatory Prusa stickers, some test filament, a little bag of Haribo, unfortunately not the big bag, but I can't eat these anymore, so oh, my, son, my son will gladly help. And some other little sods. I went for the option with the filament sensor, so I've got one of those as well. Uh, very important to me because I leave them running all night, so uh, I do need that. And then you've got the spool holder, a couple of bags of spool holder parts, and then a little accessory bag with the tools and the wipe and and uh, some spare odds and sods. We'll go through all those in a minute. Uh, you can take out the next bit of cardboard. Just um, you've then got a, a bit of this, uh, which comes out, and then you've got a layer of cardboard and the power lead. Then you can, as you can see here, unfortunately you can't see it on the thing, but uh, you've got another layer of cardboard on top as well, um, and your bed. This is all made up. Um, there's only three bits to put together on this. We've then got the LCD board, and then this should just, we've got the sheet link. This comes out, Need to hold that steady. Now comes this other bit of paper. As you can see, very well packed, very easy to take apart. We've then got the main bed, the Y axis, and then we've got the Z, all unit. It's been very, as I say, I was very impressed with the packing when I took it a bit, when I took it apart last time. And then you've got another layer of cardboard. Just like this, as you can see. And then we've got a box with the PSU in. And I think that is it, if I remember right. I'm just gonna double check. Yep, that's it. There's no more to be done. And that's it. So we've got the parts. We've got the Z and the Y, and we've got the other odds and sods here. All the bits and pieces. As you can see, there's not a great deal of it. Okay, and there you go. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and build this now. I'll tilt the camera a bit more, so we're just gonna cut off, and then we'll, once we've finished building it, we'll come back to it and have a little chat about how it was built. Right, okay, that is uh, the machine built. Okay, and that is it. That is the sum <laughs> of the build. It's not bad, it's, it's, it's very quick, it's very easy, uh, apart from putting those wires in, as you uh, did notice, I'm sure. Um, but what we're gonna do now is a pool holder. Okay, so there you go, that was the build. That was nice and easy. Uh, not hard at all, a couple of tricky bits there that uh, can be a bit annoying and frustrating, but apart from that, it's very easy, it's quick. It took me less than 10 minutes to do, I think it was. 
um, and it all went together very well. That's where the good part ends. Um, as I told you before, I have two of these. One is I've been uh, using for, uh, well, I've got to use it for five days. Um, and I have eight Mark III's and they're banging out 24 seven uh, products that we sell on our website, Ultimate Modern Products, umpretail.com if you wanna have a look. And uh, so the idea of the, getting these minis was the fact that I could get two for the price of one, basically. So instead, of, instead of one Mark III, I can get two minis so I can up the production per hour, basically. The other one went fine for five days, printed absolutely fantastic, not a problem at all. It really was, I was so impressed with it. It's very quiet. I could have two of these running and film a video as well if I wanted to. The other ones I have to stop production to film a video because uh, they're all in here as well. As uh, you can see by this photo here. Uh, so that's great. After five days, uh, it wouldn't home. And then I tried turning the key, uh, the uh, controller uh, key here, and all of a sudden it just stuck. And I couldn't press it, couldn't turn it, couldn't anything. The only way I could turn it was with a pair of pliers. And then uh, all, of, all of a sudden, I could hear a binding sound actually in the block, in the Z block here. So three things happened all at once on that one. It just would not work, would not work at all. And when you try and um, do a first layer calibration or a rehome, it would step up, um, do a bop bop, and then it'd step up again, step up, and it'd end up here right on the first line of the three point calibration on the front. So contacted producer, told them shit, sent them some videos, and they said, yep, send it back, we'll send another one out. So I thought, well, what I'll do is, uh, before I send the other one back, because I've got the box there, I just want to send it back in that box. I thought I'll do a video of unboxing this one, get this working, and then I'll send the other one back in the other box. Well, building it was easy, uh, but there's some problems with it. <laughs> It won't uh, level, it won't auto level, it just keeps failing, uh, as you can see from this photo. Um, when I got it, the, um, the Pinder probe uh, was on there nice and tight, but it was three millimeters above the bed, which is way too high. And as you can see, just flick over to the side camera here. As you can see, uh, when I tried to uh, do the first layer calibration on the first go, uh, where the uh, nozzle had heated up, it had gone straight through and it's burnt the PEI sheet and the steel sheet completely. So that's rendered that useless, that side anyway. Completely useless. So I thought, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll work on this myself. I can see that it's the Pinder that's a problem. So I've undone the Pinder, re redone it like I would do on a normal Mark III. When I build a Mark III, I'd uh, make sure that the Pinder probe was only a mil off the, off the bed. Um, and it started going fine. Did the seven point calibration, which was fantastic. Came up, uh, did about three first layer calibrations. Uh, they're all in here, uh, as you can see. What I'm noticing is that one side is really low and the other side is really high. No matter how I calibrate it, uh, I can do a hundred point difference on the calibration. And this side is always too low and this side is always too high. Um, and it's, the difference is quite staggering. It's, it, you've got a round bit of filament that doesn't stick properly on this side. On this side, it's squished far too by about 20 points. So I've tried everything. Uh, I've tried, <laughs> uh, I've taken the bed off. I've had a look at that, see if it's anything to do with the bed. Cause obviously this isn't level. You know, there's something to do these screws here. There's something here, but there's nothing loose at all. So it's another 40 mini. So that's two I ordered. They turned up over Christmas. I ordered on the day of, of release and both of them are buggered and neither of them work, and I'm really disappointed and pissed off. Uh, mainly because, um, you know, this is, I could have bought another Mark III for that, and had it ages, months and months ago. In fact, I could have bought another Mark III in the meantime as well. I could have had two Mark III's going, churning out stuff and earning me money, and now I've got nothing. I've got two piles of crap. So uh, I think I'm gonna send them both back and ask for my money back. Um, I don't think I'm gonna bother getting another one. Having one go down and think, yep, yeah, fine, not a problem. You know what, in, in any manufacturing process, you're gonna have the odd one here and there that's gonna be faulty. Two, uh, completely knackered, that won't work at all, can't, unusable machines. Uh, this one, um, it would need a whole new uh, Y assembly, uh, for sure, for it to work. Um, it's definitely the Y assembly that's wrong. Something's uneven here on the bed or warped or something. I think the rest of the machine's fine, but that other one is completely knackered. Um, <laughs> so many things wrong with it. So unfortunately, I really wanted to love with this machine because if it was good, if I was going to get good value out of them, I would have bought another 10, you know, and I could have had, you know, loads of them going because I've got to get a storage unit to put all these in now. But uh, as it is, unfortunately, uh, Prusa Mark III, the Mark III S, fantastic machines, got loads of them. But this Mini, I, I've seen other people that say that it's fantastic and they've had nothing but, pro uh, it's been fine with them. So the first one was fine for the first five days and it just could put three different things went wrong with it. 
This one, you know, just can't get it going off of the bat. And I know how to strip it. I can strip this down, even though I don't know it. I haven't got an instruction manual. I can strip this down and put it back together again. Uh, but it's definitely a problem with the bed. I think this is warped. It does move a lot, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put it on this other camera. Maybe you can see how much that moves. Um, it's solid this side, uh, but on this side, at this corner, it moves. This is down to these little spongy crappy feet uh, on the other machine that I got these feet were um, actually completely squished 100% completely squished so they were beyond useless but the machine still worked fine so uh, I didn't think anything of it uh, but this one just doesn't work so I'm going to phone up Proust so I'm going to have to return this one as well so I've got to go and buy another box and what have you and loads of filling and stuff uh, and get that in there I'm really disappointed I really wanted this to be a good review say oh well, the other machine was just a blip but unfortunately it's not I just cannot get this working I've spent Two or three hours on it. I've taken the I've taken the pinder probe right out, repositioned it, and everything. It's now at the correct height. It is at the, the exact correct height. I just can't get it to level. I've undone the screws, redone the screws on the side, and everything again. Still nothing. Uh, not not a thing at all. So I just cannot get it to do the first layer calibration properly. It's high one side, low on the other, and it doesn't matter whether I put it make it high on this side. It just just drips down on this side. So definitely a problem. It's either that, or there could be a problem on the on the x-axis so oh, it could be a problem on that uh, but it's a tiny bit loose but uh, I don't know I don't think so yep so this is going to wrap it up unfortunately I really wanted to be happy on this as I said I really want to say yep go and get this machine it's really good um, I know lots of people as I said that have had good experiences so you know maybe I've been really unlucky like extremely unlucky to get two bad uh, units on the same day from the same thing. I'm still unsure whether to give it another go and get another one a replacement. What I might do is uh, I'll send both of these back. I'll get a replacement for one and may ask for a refund on the other and see if I can get that one working. But unfortunately, that is uh, that is what where I'm at. Um, I would love to have been be love to have been better, and you know I can use these to get printing, but I can't. So at the moment, I cannot recommend these machines at all. I know these other guys that have got lots of printers say they're okay, but. I don't think they've been smashing the crap out of them for a couple of weeks. You know, these big print channels. I don't think they're going to use these as their main printers or anything at all, or, or as workshop printers, but not impressed. Uh, really unhappy and a bit pissed off. Um, still got my faith in Prusa. Hopefully they'll sort everything out. They will, they were fine with the first one, so I'm sure they'll be fine with the second one. Uh, but the other printers, the Mark III, the Mark S, bulletproof, absolutely bulletproof. Anything goes wrong, I think, I don't think I've, oh, the only thing that's gone wrong with one of those is an infrared sensor gone down, which was easy enough to replace. That's it, nothing else. So, uh, unfortunately, that's the end of the review and the build of the test. The test was non existent. Final thoughts are when it was working, it was a lovely machine. It was really quiet, printed really well, really good quality, as good as the Mark III um, and the Mark III S. Really was, uh, really nice. I was really impressed with it until it went down. But I'm seriously not impressed that this one doesn't work as well. Um, not happy in the slightest. Uh, anyway, so that's the end of it. Take care until next time. Bye bye. How? Box it. I was doing. Um, oh, we can. I can. Bleh. Blair, I need a drink. National 3D printer. No, new Prusa Mini uh, here on International 3D printer. Fuck that.